Hi friends, welcome to episode 118 of the Quirky Monday Craftcast. My name is Kalisha and you can find me anywhere online as Madeira Tani. I am coming to you as usual from my home in Central Florida um, where we're still staying home. Uh, so if you listen carefully, game shows on in the background. Um, let's address this at the beginning of the episode. I got new glasses. I'm very excited about them, but because I wanted to get them as cheap as possible, um, I did not opt to have the anti-reflective coating put on the lenses. I just got the free ones. So like there's like Kalisha inception in my lens right now. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to see how I feel about podcasting in these glasses. Um, worst, come to, worst come to worst, I'll wear one of my other pairs of glasses because now I have options. I'll just show you my other one. So I got these, which are clear on the bottom, and then they have like rainbow coloring at the top, which I thought was really cool. Um, but more than those being really cool... I'm super psyched about these. <laughs> these are the funkiest glasses I have ever owned in my life. And I love them so very much. Actually, I feel like the glare is not as bad in these because the lenses are shorter. So we're just going to stick with these. Um, I blame this purchase on Susan from the Knit Lib podcast because she was on Instagram talking about her new glasses and I was like oh man I want some funky glasses and recently I think back in January I got a, a couple of new glasses from Zenny and um, went to see if the free lenses would be super thick because I have a very strong prescription your girl is she can't see she can't see but um so I went to see if I could get the free lenses, if they would be like Coke bottles or, you know, super thick or whatever like that. And they weren't. So funky glasses were a thing that I could do and not feel like I was breaking the bank. So I think these glasses cost me like $7 and the rainbow ones were like 12 or 13 um, with the free lenses. So... I'm very excited about this. So now I've got all of these different options, all these different faces I can wear. Like, this is a whole new experience for me. A whole new world of glasses awesomeness. So I just wanted to address the new face um, and also the glare. So hopefully it's not too annoying. Um. So let's get into the episode, shall we? Let's start with Bright Spots. And I screenshotted two of them. They are actually from two episodes ago. The first one is from Vicky. And she says, a bright spot is the time my normally busy 22 year old daughter and I have been spending together, watching movies and even playing video games. And I think that's a lot of people's um, silver lining in all of this pandemic life is the ability to spend more time with family members that you wouldn't normally be able to spend that time with. And our second bright spot comes from Kay. And it says, the last few weeks have been dark and dreary, just lots of storms, which give me migraines and cloudy days. Um, we're finally getting some sun and some spring. On Sunday, we went out for a hike in the woods and found some great rock outcroppings. I lay down on the nice cool rock and just soaked up some sun rays. It was so simple, but so magical and rejuvenating. That reminds me of when I was little, we used to live in Virginia and we had a lot of woods behind our house. And my friend Chalisa and I used to go back and go hiking and exploring in the woods. And it was always so nice. I always feel 
really calm and kind of centered when I'm in the woods, which um, if you're a returning viewer, you might remember a couple weeks ago me talking on and on about wanting to go put my feet in the dirt and hug a tree, basically. <laughs> so I would love to be able to get out and hike, but the parks around here are closed. Um, if you're a new viewer, Bright Spots are basically um, a point in the podcast where I share positive things that have happened to you guys. So you can either leave them in the comments um, down below. Let me know it's a bright spot, something positive, something good, something uplifting or something like that to share with everyone because I want it to be, I want this to be something that can um, stir up good things, stir up good vibes. So leave those in the comments. We also have a Ravelry thread in our group, which is always linked down below. So you can also leave bright spots over there. But to be honest, I see them faster if you leave them in the, in the comments on the video. So let's get into the crafting. Um, I, once again, don't have any finished objects. Um, any yarny finished objects. I did do a painting the other day. Ta-da! It's a messy little flower. <laughs> um, I was playing around with my um, watercolor brush pens. Let me grab one real quick. These are the watercolor brush pens that I have. They're by the brand Art 101 Creative Tools and they're just watercolor brush pens. They come in these different colors and this is actually two sets. And I got them from a store called um, Five Below. So I saw them, I thought it was kind of fun, something new to try out, and they work pretty okay. They also came with a water brush, like one of the, the brushes that you put the water in the handle and paint with. Um, so basically the way that I've used them is I like brush the paint on with the, the paint pen um, and you can you know kind of blend and stuff with that and then I go over it with the water pen just to give it like a more watercolory look. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to use them but that's what I'm doing. So this painting I used those water watercolor markers I also used um, my actual like watercolor um, paint set it's just like a cheapo one that I got at Michael's I think um, there's a little um, what are those things called gelatos I had a gold gelato so there's a little sparkle in it and then also some line work done with um, a gold paint marker so yeah, you can kind of see the shimmer in that a little bit. I was just kind of feeling. I've been doing a lot of feeling this week, y'all. Um, my, my baseline has not been very base. It's been kind of, but it's all right. One more day, one foot in front of the other, onward and upward all of those things uh, but that's all I have for finished objects I haven't finished anything yarny but I am working so since I am working let me show you what I'm working on this is my main project this is my quarantine sweater it is a open front cardigan that's being made using loops and threads do I have a, yes I do. Loops and Threads Charisma Tweed. This is a yarn from Michaels and the colorway is honey. Yeah, the colorway is honey. And this is how far I've gotten. It's looking like a sweater. Oops. So, oh, don't poke yourself in the neck with the needles. So I was playing around with it when I first split from the sleeves and started going down the body. And I was like, oh, I kind of like this rolled neck. I don't know if I'm really digging it anymore. But this is how it looks so far.
Don't lose stitches, girl. Ta-da! I quite like it. However, one thing that I never think about when I'm using acrylic yarns, see this, this yarn is, um, I think it's 100% acrylic. I'm pretty sure it's 100% acrylic. Hello? Oh, basically, it's 97% acrylic, 3% other fibers. But one thing that I never pay attention when it comes to like store brand acrylic yarns is the dye lot. You should still pay attention to the dye lot, the dye lot. Because I laid this sweater out and it's definitely striped. Like it's not striped in, in the sense like, oh, I'm gonna go outside and people are gonna be like, oh, nice striped sweater. But like, can you see it? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna sound like a crazy person. Oh no, you can definitely see it. It's, hold on. I do sound like a crazy person. I'm on my fourth ball of yarn. So here's one color, here's another. Then this one kind of matches the first one. And then the one that I'm working on now matches this one. So if I could tell which way, like which way it was going, I would just keep alternating between the two um, but alas, I don't know what is what, so I'm just going to keep knitting. It's fine. Nobody's going to stop me in the street like, your sweater has very, very faint stripes in it. Did you know that? And if they do, I'll just tell them, yeah, I knew that. And I made this whole sweater with my own hands. So I think... Lengthwise, I think I'm going to go maybe this amount more and then maybe start, I don't know if I want to put a ribbing. Yes, I'm going to put a ribbing. Um, this much and then start the bottom ribbing. Or maybe I'll do a garter band around to match this. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I'll do a garter band around that way it matches this. Then I'll go ahead and do the sleeves, which I'm going to do three quarter, three quarter length sleeves. So those will have a garter band around wherever they end. I think it's going to be here. They'll have a little garter band. And then I guess that means I need to do some sort of garter band collar. We don't know. But yeah, this has been the project that I've been working on in meetings, late at night, whatever. This is my go-to. Um, my other go-to project, I don't know where it went. Oh, here it is. My other go-to project is my sock, which hasn't gotten a lot longer than when y'all saw it last week. Nothing too spectacular. Um, it's just a plain vanilla sock. This is the Crew Colorway by Lion Brand Manny Petty with a green. This is not green. This is gray with a gray heel. Uh, the other sock is the same, but just has a black heel. If you're a new viewer, it's that way because I lost my black yarn and then found it right after I finished the heel. So, whatever. It's fine. Um, I have been really wanting to cast on a new pair of socks, but I'm trying to finish. I want to finish this pair of socks so that it's not kind of um, hovering over my head. So I figure maybe tonight I'll see if Lamar wants to watch a movie and just blow through the end of this sock while watching a movie because I tend to knit a lot faster when I'm watching a movie as opposed to like if I'm watching videos on YouTube or something like that I'll just especially if it's a really intense movie like if there's a lot of action and I'm just like <gasps> I just I'm like a little machine it's amazing 
is that all for oh no there is one more work in progress I put it right here so I didn't forget and I almost forgot it this is my quilt so I'm making a quilt using leftover African print fabric and I have chosen the backing so I'm just flinging this around like it doesn't have pins in it I'm gonna stab myself in the eye be an adult Kalisha but this is the back the fabric that I decided to use for the background last time I talked about this quilt I was trying to decide if I wanted to sacrifice a whole cut of my African print fabric for the back of this quilt and as you can see I did this is actually one of my in the hierarchy of favorite prints this one is near the bottom so I decided to use that one and it turned out to be the perfect amount and I have just a little tiny bit of leftover since um, cutting for the back so now all I have to do with this is quilt it there's a today is Thursday um, April 16th and I think they're doing some kind of like family Disney sing-along on TV and it's a spoonful of sugar that's playing right now I'm not gonna sing along I'm gonna continue so now all I have to do is quilt it and then do the binding and honestly the binding is the part of quilting that just Oh, I, I don't know why I'm so nervous to do binding. I feel like I'm going to ruin it. But it's a good thing that between me and the binding is a whole mess of quilting that needs to happen. So the only other work in pro well, that's everything for the quilt right now. Um, the only other work in progress I have is my Celestarium, which I am plugging along. I'm chugging along. I think... I've done three more rows, but you legitimately cannot tell a difference. So I'm really not going to show it to you guys until it's done. Um, so yes, that's everything in works in progress. The next section is maker plans and it's not really a, excuse me, it's not really a plan. It's more so a plan to finish because I was looking for something. I don't remember what I was looking for, but in the process of looking for it, I found this. Do you guys remember this? Uh, this top is, or this pattern is uh, the Susanna Racerback by Elizabeth Desimore. And I made this last year. This is actually the second one I made. The first one I made, what was wrong with it? I think it was, oh, I made it too wide and I decided to just take it in, like sew down the sides and take it in like it was regular fabric. Does not work, children, don't do that. Uh, so I made another one, but I lost steam because I didn't seam it. And I had taken this out and I was like, okay, Felicia, just put it on the desk and you'll seam it. Somewhere between then and now, it got moved off the desk, put in something, and out of sight, out of mind, and here we are. So I'm going to seam this so that I can actually wear it in the Florida summer, which is now. Evidently. So I made this using the cotton yarn that they had at Walmart. Who made that yarn? Was that Lion Brand? Cotton? Co comfy cotton? Cozy cotton? Some sort of cotton. I think it was Lion Brand. But um, really nice red. I wish I could be a perfect daughter, but I go back to the water. That's all I know. Um, that's the only thing for maker plans. So, putting this out here, you guys hold me accountable. 
by next episode, that top is going to be seamed. Done. It's going to be done. Do I even have any of that yarn left? Okay, may not be done because I might not have any of that yarn left. I might just seam it with something else because yeah. it's fine. It's fine. Um, next up, I'm looking at my notes over there. Next up is stash positions, and I have one, and I'm very excited about it. I have been refreshing the USPS tracking so that I can see when it's delivered, or so that I could see when it was delivered, and as soon as that thing said delivered, I walked myself right out to the, po the, the post box. Where do I live? The mailbox. And um, got my package from Robin of Birch Hollow Fibers and this is what I got from her. This is definitely a quarantine purchase, stress buying, just feeling like mm, one day and decided to treat myself. Um, this colorway is called Vignettes Wings and there's, there is no question as to why I purchased this color. This is, this is, this is Kalisha, y'all. You already know. Let's, let's take the, what you call it off? Who's singing? I don't know who that is. She sang it. Yes. I know this is, okay, Vignette is a fairy in a show that I think played on Netflix, Amazon, somewhere. Um, and this is inspired by her wings, but this just makes my Pisces heart leap for joy. Oh, hmm. Yes. I don't know what this is gonna be, but it's gonna be something amazing. I am also going to have to like look and see if I have because I have a collection of Robin's yarn and every time I've scanned up like I think two two of her two Hanks right and every time I'm like okay yeah I'm gonna do XYZ with this yarn I look at it and I'm like that pattern or that idea is not good enough for this beautiful yarn so then I put it down and I'm just like you have to be something amazing like you need to be on show and um, this definitely needs to be on show this is so pretty Robin you're so amazing just can you get in there get just oh we love it oh look at this just right here Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. So that wasn't the only thing that I ordered. She also had a bookmark. And um, this bookmark was a part of the, um, like the yarn book club that she did with, oh, I cannot think of the name of the other dyer it's like on the tip of my tongue I can see it in my head I'll put it on the screen but this bookmark was from that collection and it has a quote on it by Lupita Nyong'o and it says real beauty comes from your mind and your heart it begins with how you see yourself not how others see you so I got this today and I was really excited about it, and I put it in the book I was reading, which is, oh, get it together. <laughs> I'm like, rrr, rrr. this one right here. I was reading Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tommy Adeyemi, and I put this bookmark in it, and then I finished reading the book. Like, I inhaled that book, y'all. <laughs> and I have so many feelings that I'm just saying I really enjoyed it and I am I want the, the third book to come out I'm sorry y'all I keep kicking you 
I can't wait till the third book because I I need I have questions I need answers to. Okay, I have questions. They need answers. I need to know that certain people are okay. I really enjoyed the adventure that this book took me on. Could have pimp slapped a couple people a number of times. Just boom. But then I have to remind myself, just like when I was reading Harry Potter, I had to remind myself that these are still teenagers. I'm pretty sure that everybody, like the main characters in these books, are, are not yet 20. <laughs> so I cannot pimp slap them for poor, choice, for poor choices. There's so many times in that book I was like, oh my gosh, make a better choice. Are we making wise choices, children? Are we making wise choices? Feelings. All of them. <laughs> so yeah, that bookmark got to live in a book for all of like five minutes when I closed the book and I was like, okay, Kalisha, you need to take a break from reading this. And I walked away for like five minutes and then I came back. And I was like, screw that. And I finished reading the whole book. There is one last thing that I have in stash positions. It's not yarny or anything, but it is kind of crafty. I bought a stylus pen for my iPad. And that's just a white box. There you go. Um, it's not an Apple pen, an Apple pencil, because an Apple pencil is like $100. Um, this one I got on Amazon and it looks like this. So I've been playing around with it. I downloaded an app called some, I can't remember what it's called. It's a drawing app. I'll put the title or the name on the screen, but it's, um, just a regular drawing app. Nothing special. Um, I looked at Procreate because I've been watching a lot of artist vlogs and they just make drawing, they make drawing on your iPad look super easy when they're using Procreate. So I was like, okay, let me check out that program. And unfortunately, I can't download that on my iPad because my iPad needs to be updated. It's like one update behind the minimum that you need for Procreate, but that's fine. I just got this app and it was free. So there's that. Um, another app slash potential purchase is, um, and again, I can't remember the name of it. I, my brain is really fuzzy today, guys. I do apologize. But I got another app, um, for editing my videos. So I don't know if this is going to be edited in the new app or edited in iMovie like I've been doing. But I've been looking for another, um, app to edit my videos um, that's going to give me more control over like the text and things like that because sometimes it's really annoying when I want to put something on the screen and you can't really see it because of where the text lies or like if I'm sitting like this and I put text on the screen it's probably going to end up right here in these books and that's going to make it kind of hard to read so um, I wanted something that was going to give me a little bit more control over the overall look of the text and the placement and stuff like that. So this app that I got does do that. Um, and I think I'm going to play around with the free version of it before um, potentially purchasing it. Now, some of you guys may know that I do have a coffee account or a Ko-Fi or however you say it. It's always linked in the down bar. So occasionally, you know, people will go and buy me coffees or whatever, like as like a thank you for the content that I put out. And I have been saving that money um, to use towards the betterment of this podcast. So um, whenever I do decide to purchase that, because I think, I really do think that I'm going to purchase the the full version of this app just because I'm a little bit of a nerd when it comes to fonts and all of the fonts that I love are on the purchase level and then there's a lot of other um, 
pizzazzy kind of things that you can do um, with that that purchased version. So if you've ever bought me a coffee, thank you. And you have contributed to making this podcast better. Um, yeah, so I've been practicing drawing on my iPad with that stylus pen, um, which has been really cool. I have not drawn in so long. Um, so I, I feel like I'm trying to learn who I am as a, as a visual artist all over again. I used to draw so much, so much. Um, it's really weird, you know, trying to, to flex my muscles in that area and to rediscover my voice as that kind of creator. But yeah. So that's a thing that's happening. Um, maybe I'll start like showing things that I'm doing on here. I want to get back into doodling. You guys have already seen that I'm doing a little bit more painting, just trying to, to stretch myself into these other creative areas. Um, yeah, so thumbs up for that. But that's everything for Stash stash acquisitions. Kind of. Okay, so we'll go into my new segment, which I've decided to call Plant Mama Life. That, that's a working title. That might change. Um, so Plant Mama Life is a section where we talk about my plants because that's a thing now. We have my ivy that's, you know, chilling here over my shoulder. And then over this shoulder, we have my nerve plant, which is doing really well, I think. I did, I feel like she's getting very tall and skinny. So I've been researching, trying to figure out what I need to do to keep, to like, to make her more bushy. And it seemed that pruning was the way to go. And I'm just a non-believer, so... Everything I was reading and in the videos I was watching was like, oh, just snip and then a new sprout will come from that spot. Also, I am very impatient, which this whole plant life thing is teaching me. I am impatient as I'll get out because I'm like, I cut it one day and I'm, I'm waiting for it to sprout the next. That's not how it works. But what I did was... These are the two little sprout or little ends that I clipped. I clipped one from here, right here, and then the other one from right here. And then what I did, I had them in a container of water, but um, recently um, we had gone, my, my husband Lamar and I went out to do the shopping and um he needed to get some stuff for our mango trees in the back because they're leaning over so we had to get some posts you know keep them stable don't want them to fall over take care of your plants and while we were there i found oops i found this which is take root rooting hormone for growing new plants from cuttings so i took my cuttings out of the water, put a little root hormone in them and stuck them in the dirt, which is allegedly a thing you can do. They're not dead yet. So I count this as a good thing. And this one I feel like has a little, little tiny something, something happening. So yeah. So that's my nerve plant. Um, also named Nirvana. Um, I keep her over here on this tray because I, I read that they like humidity. So that's a tray of rocks with some water in it to keep it a little moist around her. Um, and this, she's moving a whole lot. Like I turn her every day. And at the end of the day, she's like peeking around the bookshelf at the window. But do what you do, boo. We'll give her a little rotate there. Um, so the day that we went out and I got the root hormone, 
I didn't I, I went to get a new pot I wanted a pot like I was looking for a rectangular shaped pot um, in the store when we went and I did not find one but what I did find was a gold a golden pothos pothos and this one is like living their best life like look how lush this is already and I all I did was buy it um, what I did do though when I was looking I was between this one and another pothos um, I was counting to see like how many nodes I can propagate because in my mind I just have this vision of like a super like full plant so since it's already kind of going that way I'm going to take some cuttings from this side try to propagate that this leaf I don't know what you're doing homie everybody else is looking the other way why are you looking back I guess don't let nobody sneak up on you okay but um, I'm going to take some cuttings from this to do some propagating and yeah I really like this one the leaves I like this one a lot better than my other pothos which is um, I think it's called Jade and Pearl so instead of the green and like yellow variegation, it's like green and white. And that was just a lot smaller. It's also testing my patience, y'all. But I saw it's got a couple new leaves on it today. So I was like, okay, you're doing things. So the reason that I was looking for a um, rectangular pot was because I had three arrowhead plants um, and I wanted to put them all in the same pot because I figured that that would like look better and they just they just felt really constricted in the pots that they were in so since I couldn't find the kind of pot I was looking for I did find a square one and I spent a couple nights ago kind of like separating them out and repotting them in this uh, square pot. So this is what we have. We have a bush <laughs> of arrowhead plants. So this one, the darker one is Maria. Um, the one in the middle here is Berry Illusion. And then the one at the top is, I wanna say White Butterfly. Um, so the way that I potted them, I took, I split each one of these into three. The biggest section of the three I put in the middle, like diagonally across I put in the middle, and then the two smaller ones I put off to the sides. The white butterfly one is the whole, it's just one, I didn't separate it at all and I just stuck it in the back. Um, so I think, I think she's okay. You alright boo? Like, I kind of thought that she was going to hate me for a while for how much struggle I put her root system through in separating them. But, um, she's not dead. She's not drooping. I think we're good. Now, in the process of separating, um, the Maria and the Berry Illusion, I had two pieces that just kind of jumped free from the group. So I just put them into their own little jars. Um, so this is one of the Maria's and it's got a little tiny leaf. And then one of the berries also came loose and they're just hanging out. So these just hang out in the window. Um, this little green bottle is one that I got from a thrift store a long time ago. Um, I really like it because it's green and it says squib. I just loved it. So that is everything with my arrowhead plants. I'll give you guys an update on my propagation, which is one thing that I was super excited about. Um, the uh, last episode when I said we've got roots, we've got roots. This one. 
this little pothos cutting I don't think it's doing anything I'm just gonna leave it in there until it dies but this is a cutting from my heartleaf philodendron and the other leaf is opening so excited so very excited and I'm 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 very happy with this one because I didn't notice but since I have these on the window so a lot of times when I'm in here I'll have the window open because I really like fresh air and a breeze must have come in the window and lifted this out of the jar and threw it on the floor and I did not notice until I went up to take them down off the window to close it and I was like what in the world where is my cutting and it was laying on the floor I was like oh no so I kind of feel like the roots got a little dried out because yeah there you go so the end of the root is very like skinny and dry looking but then it gets a little it gets fluffier at the top I don't know if that's how it's supposed to look or if that's because it got thrown on the floor but the leaf is still opening up so it's not dying we're good <sighs> the last um, propagating experiment I want to show you guys is um, a complete experiment I don't know if these are gonna do anything or what but I have these I actually have four of them I've got two in soil and two in water these are uh, spiderlets I think is what they were called but um, these are the babies from a spider plant that a student gave Lamar a couple years ago so Lamar gets this plant um, and then I think he brought it home because it was I think it was like hurricane season and the school closed early so he brought the plant home and the plant never made it back to the school so it's just kind of been hanging out with the mangoes <laughs> like yeah all the other plants are super tall it's like on the ground all short it's okay homie you've got friends but um, when we were outside watering the mangoes the other day I looked at it and I noticed these little like all these little babies so I was like hmm I bet I can plant that and of course now plant mama Kalisha just wants to plant all the things so we're gonna see how this goes um, so like I said I've got two in water and two in soil and these have probably been here for like two or three days now so it's gonna be kind of exciting to see their development um, they're also kind of damaged like a lot of them looks like a bug came and like munched their leaves and I don't want to cut the damaged leaves off because um, I don't want to kill it so I'll wait for it to for them all four of them have damage but I'll wait for them to grow a little bit more and then I'll start trimming back those damaged leaves um, but that's everything positive where I am as a plant mama now I hope that you other plant folks out there can help me because my Rex begonia is giving me is stressing me out <laughs> so it's in this bag because I'm trying to, to create a better environment for it like giving it more humidity I had it sitting next to the nerve plant on the the rocks but I guess that wasn't enough um, because it went like limp and I don't know what that means I have been doing a lot of googling and so far nothing really has been able to help me <gasps> did that leaf fall off homie are you dying dying no I keep holding out the hope though because this one leaf in the middle you can't even hardly see that one leaf right there is is looking good it's the rest of them that look like their life is over maybe I just got a damaged plant maybe this isn't my fault it's probably my fault so yeah if you are a whiz when it comes to begonias can you help me what should I be doing guide me in the direction of not killing this plant um yeah help I I watered it and then I put the bag on it and then I put it 
near the window so that I, I don't know it just felt like the right thing to do so I did it <laughs> help I need help oh I was feeling so good as a plant mama and then this begonia was like screw everything you thought it's my problem child that's everything in the plant in the plant world um, all the other plants are doing really well um, and and my gauge for doing really well is not dead not dead and not fainted they're standing up they're looking happy I move like I turn them around they start turning back to the Sun not killing them um, so yeah, that's everything for Plant Mama Life. Um, the last thing that I have is life and whatnot. And to be honest, I think until the quarantine is over, I am going to just nix the life and whatnot section because it's been the same. Still at home, still working from home. Um, this week has been a difficult one um, emotionally. I definitely feel, I have been feeling the downswing. Um, last night was particularly bad. Um, but I went to sleep. And I feel, sometimes I feel like when I get into these places where I start feeling really down and then my mind starts going kind of like that negative like negative Kalisha gets like real crunk and she's on my shoulder yelling about how like much of a waste of space I am we don't need that um, I just go to sleep and try again the next day so I'm very happy that I had the presence of mind to be like, mm, we're just going to go to sleep and not just sit awake in the darkness, feeling like garbage and letting that, that thought process snowball. Um, but yeah, I woke up this morning. I felt a little bit better. Um, and, um, I don't know. I just... I wish that I could I wish I had a tent y'all I wish I had a tent that I could put out in the backyard and just be by myself I think I'm gonna buy a tent I think that's a wise a wise adult decision I, I'm gonna buy myself a little tent put it in the backyard put some pillows in it and hope it doesn't rain <laughs> but um, I think being being at home or being being at home um, without the real option of going somewhere for a change of scenery or um, a change I think I think a lot of us are running into that um, that wall of starting to feel a little claustrophobic but this isn't forever I tell myself this is not forever and I think I'm gonna buy that tent <laughs> but yeah I don't have anything else that I really wanted to talk to you guys about I already told you about reading this book um, I am going to finish this one I started actually listening to this on audiobook which was pretty cool um, this is black enough stories of being young and black in America edited by E.B. Zaboy and um, when I tell you so many of these stories have I've identified with as like as I've had that experience too um, it's just been it's 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 been kind of a pleasure to read um so 
I need to finish this. And then what am I going to read? Oh, I have library books I need to read. I actually have a stack of them right here. Let's find out what library books Kalish is reading. Attempting to read. Checking out with hopes to read. Let's see. Okay, I have A Blade So Black, which I heard really good things about. Um, that one, and then it's got a second book. I don't remember what the second book is called, but um, I think we also have that one checked out. So I've got that I want to read. Um, I have, oh, I checked out the City of Bones. Which book is this? Oh, this is a bad idea, guys. I only dropped one. Okay, this is book one, um, The City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. Um, I recently watched the movie of this one and I was like, oh, it's a book? Okay, I wanna read the book. And then I realized that I had purchased one of these books from the thrift store, but Kalisha and her genius self, I don't know why I did this. Um, <laughs> I bought, City of Ashes, which is book two. Why did I buy book two? Because I was like, oh, well, I saw the movie of book one, so I can just start reading book two. No, Kalisha, it doesn't work like that. So I've got these two that I can read. So yeah, I think it's a matter of getting the books out where I can see them uh, because that out of sight, out of mind thing is real. Um yeah so that's everything I think I want to share with you guys I'm not I have a couple more masks I need to make I think I might do that tonight I might get my sewing machine out make these masks so that I can be done um oh I don't know if I mentioned this last week if I had known by then but um the friend that I have down here who's a nurse who I was giving the mask to to give them away in the hospital has been sending me pictures of people in the masks that I gave her and it has been it feels so good to know that what I'm doing is actually like useful you know so um yeah that was really nice and it was um the what did she say he was a travel nurse and he was getting transferred to another location and the picture she sent me was the nurse with his um his mask and he was wearing one of the superhero ones that i made and he had tied a um something a gown or something around his neck and it was like flying out behind him it was really awesome and then she sent me another picture of um one of our other friends who's also in healthcare so she had um, one of the masks on and it just it felt good and then um, I sent some to my best friend and <laughs> she messaged me the other day and she said that they got the mask and she said thank you and her son who is three um, I made him a Black Panther mask and he put the mask on and she said Kalisha he won't take it off <laughs> So that just made me feel good. One, that the mask fit him. And two, that he was excited enough to wear it. Because I can only imagine how scary that might be, you know, when you, if you leave the house or as a child to see people walking around with masks on. Um, but I'm glad that he was excited about the mask because of the characters and stuff that I put on it. So, um, yay. So yeah, I have a couple more family members that I need to make for and a couple more that I want to do for the hospital. Um, I bought a couple more rolls of ribbon while we were out doing the shopping that day. And um, I think when all of that ribbon is done, 
I think the mask, the mask making factory will shut down. Maybe. Unless there's like some grievous like overlooking <laughs> that I have done. But I think that's going to be all that I do. Um, but yeah, that's everything. Thank you guys so much for being a part of my universe. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging with me. Um, leave a comment down below of something good, something positive, something uplifting, because we definitely need it these days. Um, fill the comment section up with that positivity. That's your homework. Um, yeah. And I... I'm going to go do something. I hope that you have a good day. Bye, friends.